What's up, everybody? This is the 360 Places Podcast, and this is your host, Jay. So welcome back. If you're new here, this is a travel podcast, and this is episode number 11. And today we're going to be talking about the cost of travel, all the different types of costs that you're going to incur when traveling. We're going to talk about each category that I've actually categorized them in three different, in five different categories. I'm going to talk about each category. I'm going to talk about each cost. And I'm going to share tips, hacks on how you can make each category cost effective. And this is going to help you on your next trip to actually spend the uh, least amount of money than you'd have spent. Yeah. So the, the categories that I've actually um, laid down and this, has, uh, this, and this category has come after I have a research that I've done for you guys. For you to just get the information and travel is going to be easy for you guys lucky for you so the first category is actually um the documents that you're going to need when traveling and then we have food then we have um entertainment then we have transport and lastly we have accommodation so i'm going to talk about each and every category and to help you guys get to know the category get to know all the costs that are in that category and how cost effective can you make each category for you to have that trip that you always dreamed of, but you thought money is a problem. Well, I'm here to tell you, money isn't a problem. Of course, you're going to spend some money, but it's not going to be much as much if you follow these hacks and tips that I'm going to share in this episode. So, guys, yeah, let's kick it off with... um, um First, before I actually like go um to the categories, let me just say accommodation and transport is going to cost you um nearly 70 to 80 percent of the total cost so i'm going to talk about them last because i have a lot of tips and hacks on that and a lot of information to share on that so make sure to listen to the end for you to get all the tips on the flights you know just basically the transport and where you're gonna sleep so let's start with the documents that you're gonna need um, this actually depends on where you're going, but basically, if you're going to a foreign country, of course, you're going to need a passport. And getting a passport, it depends actually the country, but it's not so pricey with every country. And other documents that you're going to need, uh, like it depends on actually the country that you're going because there are different requirements. Um, some countries will require vaccines of different things, like the yellow fever, which a lot of countries require. Another essential document that you're going to actually need is visas. So it actually depends on where you're going. You, you're going to require, but if it's a foreign country, more probably going to require a visa. So um, just a simple hack and tip to this. Uh, you're better off traveling to places where your passport can take you visa-free. Yes, there are a lot of countries that your passport can take you for visa free so just do research on that one it actually depends on the country that you're coming from some passports can actually take you to around 170 or 80 countries for free visa free some some passports can take you up to 50 30 countries visa free so actually just do some research on your passport where it can take you for visa free and yeah you might as well as plan a trip to those countries first well while, while you're on a budget and travel to those countries first visa free and save a few bucks that you would have spent on visa and you spend them on other areas and you increase your budget on other areas and maybe you could now sleep in that fancy hotel maybe for one day yeah it um in in the document part of the cost most things are actually really just fixed and the cost is not that high it's just yeah it's just a reasonable cost so i'm I'm not gonna spend much time on that category but just so you know you're gonna need um to sort out your documents and they're gonna cost you a little bit of money yeah if you don't have them already but it's, it's just something that you get once then you're done and dusted then you can have it for a lifetime as long as it doesn't expire it doesn't get used up so the second category that i'm gonna go with um is entertainment so by entertainment, I mean all the places that you'd want to visit, all the attractions, all the um, museums, the concerts, maybe if you're going to go to a concert, the festivals and stuff. So in this category, actually, it's going to 
cost you some money depending on the place that you want to visit. But just uh, mainly the tips to this category on how to make cost effective in this category. Number one, be the early bird. Yeah, that's basically a tip that everyone knows. Be the early bird. So if you're going to go to a concert, make sure you book your ticket maybe two months prior or three months prior. That's the best time. So tickets normally tend to be lower when you book early. So yeah, make sure you do that on the entertainment sections and make sure you visit um places that are free. There are actually tons and thousands of places that you can visit depending on the country that you're going or the place that you're going that are actually free. We have free beaches. Just try to visit as much as free as much as many free spots that are available and you can actually balance it out with actually going to places that you can pay for and they're actually worth your money and balance it out with places that you can visit for free and they're actually cool just do your research and according to where you're going there are gonna be free places that you can visit and actually enjoy it and have beautiful sceneries so yeah, make sure you do your research first. It's going to help you to know which places could you could actually go in that destination that you want to go that are for free. And this is actually going to save you a lot of money that you're going to use in the different categories that are going to require a lot of money, like flights. Yeah, flights are going to require a lot of money, but I'm here to bring that money down. Yeah, so I'm not also going to spend a lot of time in the entertainment category because, yeah, basically it's just book early and make sure to visit as make sure to know and visit as much as there is free spots in that destination that you're headed to so let's talk about food <laughs> for all the food is out there so there are different ways to go about getting your food in the destination that you're traveling to in case if you're just traveling maybe um as a tourist or you want to go walk there or you want to go actually live there so they're actually different ways to go about getting your food de depending on the destination that you're going and depending on the why you're going there in the first place so basically in most cases in actually all the destinations street food is going to be cheap yeah that's just period street food is going to be cheap than the restaurants the, the fancy hotels so the tip here is just balance out your itineraries so if you're going to a place maybe for seven days, make sure you use the four, three or four days to actually just get food from the streets and the two days to actually get fancy, nice seafood from that fancy as restaurant that you've always been dreaming about. Yeah, yeah. So if you balance that out, you could actually save a lot of money that could enable you to eat that good meal in that restaurant and just be careful with the street food that you're eating some street places that some street vendors are not actually very clean and but they're actually quite a number of good places that you could get um, just clean food from the streets so make sure you do your research uh, read the reviews uh you actually do this on youtube you actually do this on on google you actually google that and get some substantial information on where to get the good quality street food that actually save you a few bucks that you're going to need in other categories that are going to require a lot of money. So yeah, on the food part, that's it. And actually another thing that, yeah, another thing on, on the food category that you're going to, that's just going to help you um, make the cost effective in this category of food is actually buying food from the supermarkets. So wherever you're going in that destination's, wherever you're going in that destination that you're going, they're probably going to be supermarkets. So you're better off buying a packed food in the supermarkets. They're going to be a, a, a lot more cheaper than eating in restaurants and hotels. So yeah, actually there the are two tips to that. So eat street food, um, good street food, and actually buy food from supermarkets. Uh, I'm also not going to spend a lot of time in that. I just want to get to this two main categories of which I'm getting there right now that are going to really reduce your costs exponentially and get it to a place where it's affordable for you to actually 
go on that next trip that you've wanted to always go. So we've we, we're done with um the documents, the interta- the entertainment part, and the food part. Where um this is the least expense goes to and. I've actually shared the tips that you guys can use to reduce that. So let's talk about accommodation. So accommodation consumes a lot of the a lot of the big percent of the cost that you're gonna use in your travel, but there are actually a lot of ways that you could actually bring that down. So the number one way to actually bring the cost down in the accommodation area is if you have a friend in that destination that you're going to and is a good friend of yours and you trust them. You might as well as crash uh, in their place to actually just bring that cost down to zero. Because if you're crashing the place, the only thing you're going to worry about maybe is the transport and moving around. And yeah, since they're going to have you covered with food and with shelter. So if you're, if you're going to a destination and you have, if you have a friend and you're comfortable actually sharing um the shelter with them so just reach out talk to them if they're also comfortable with that and you're gonna solve you're gonna save a few bucks on that and the number two thing is coach surfing i don't know if you guys have heard of this but coach surfing is actually a website that allows um locals to register their properties in the website and to actually share it for free so if you 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 want to go to a new country you don't have friends there and you you want to meet the locals, you know, experience the actual local experience, and you're comfortable, you know, getting to know a new person, and you're comfortable allowing a stranger to host you, um, coach surfing might be a good option for you. And it's actually free, guys. It's totally free. So you're gonna bring that accommodation cost to zero. From maybe you could maybe like spend maybe a decent amount of maybe $200 a night, $400 a night, $1,000 a night. So you bring that down to zero. So you see how that actually plays a big role in actually making uh, your, your travel cost effective. So if you're comfortable with actually getting hosted by a stranger, but you, you got to be careful because not everybody's a good guy. So you, you got to be careful on, on whom you trust to host you in that new destination that you're going. But if you're comfortable with that, then definitely check out coach surfing it's just yeah just google coach surfing and you'll get to know more about it but it's actually free so yeah if you're comfortable with that you can go with coach surfing other like cheap alternatives for accommodation are hotels dorm rooms yeah those are actually best if you if you're not comfortable with um sleeping the stranger letting a stranger host you and um you have a small budget set for the accommodation area so you might as well as check dorm rooms and hostels and yeah the, the number of websites as well that you could use to to find these hostels in the different destinations that you are going just google that and a lot of websites will come up and yeah you're gonna get yourself sorted uh the number three tip in this if you want to make cost effective in the accommodation area is knocking doors i don't know if you guys are gonna be comfortable with that but if you're comfortable with that this is couch surfing but a little more i don't know how to put it but it's a little more like in the old days couch surfing is the modern way the contemporary way of doing door knocking so you could actually go and knock doors on the locals and see if they can host you that is not a good idea but some people do that I've seen a lot of people do that, and yeah, if if it's something you can do, but security wise, I, I I don't advise it. But if it's something you can do, you might as well as do it. So they host you for free. You get to know the locals as well. You experience and you get all the information that you need about going around the city from the locals. Of which that information is gonna be great because if you talk to the locals, they're gonna tell you all the areas that maybe. You did your Google research on and you couldn't see them. The locals are going to tell you about it. So if it's it's actually something you consider, you're actually thinking about doing it. Yeah, it's security wise. It's not that safe, but you might as well. I mean, yeah, you might as well as do it. So, yeah, in the accommodation part. And we actually talked about um, if you're traveling in a group, you'd rather stay in an Airbnb where the cost will also go 
relatively down than staying in a hotel. So we actually talked about more of which option is better for you. Is it Airbnb or hotel in our first episode? So if you're watching this on YouTube, you might as well as I'm going to put a card so you can watch that video after you're done listening to this episode. Or if you're listening this in all the other audio platforms, you can finish watching or you can finish listening to this to this episode and then you go back to episode number one and get to see which option is better for you and which option is cost effective for your next travel. So that's pretty much it about accommodation and those are the tips that I had for you guys that you can use to actually lower down your cost on the accommodation or actually bring it down to zero by doing the couch surfing or talking to a friend or knocking the doors of strangers or hosts something and they can't take you in. And uh, now we're going to the favorite part of the podcast and I actually wanted to spend a lot of time talking about transport because I feel like besides accommodation, transport is another big area where you're going to spend a lot of your money. Uh, I feel like it's even accountable for maybe 50% of your of, of the cost that you're going to use in your next travel. And I have some amazing lyric tips on this area on this category of transport so um it depends on actually where you're going but in most cases if you're going in a foreign country then you're gonna need a flight but if you you're just going in in a in a neighboring city so you you're gonna you, you can use public transport or you can use or you can hire a car for, for a private drive so i'm gonna talk more about flights because i feel like this is where um a, a lot of the money goes so i'm gonna talk about how you guys can get cheap flights and how you guys can go around different areas with just that minimum budget that you have. And yeah, 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 yeah. So number one thing on the transport part. So if you you actually, I'm going to talk about flights last because I have a lot of things to talk about. So if you're actually there on that destination that you're going to, and of course you, you're going to get there by flight or by train or by bus, but we're going to talk about you getting there after I talk about this. So if you're in that destination that you are going to, so you're also going to need transport to go around maybe the city or that um, village or that anything you <laughs> that you're going to go to, you're going to need transport to go around that area. And um, the number one hack that I have on this one is to actually consider walking and actually getting um, a taxi or Uber or something. Consider walking because in most cases, in most places that you're going to go, the distance is not quite that long. That It's just a distance that you can cover by walking. And I've done this myself in several places that I've visited and I've walked to <laughs> different places, a 30-minute walk, and, and I've even done like um, a two-hour walk to a place. And I just love it. It's it's just you get to see the city or that place that you to in 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 a in a more authentic way because you get to see everything all by yourself just when you walk into that place that you're going. So yeah, if and the best way to actually do this, best way to actually walk around the city or walk around the place that you're to, is actually use Google Map because you're new there and it's tricky to actually just stop. A, a stranger and ask them because you don't know uh, you, you for your safety and this is like a tip i'm also i'm also like sharing for the safety parts of the travel because you don't know anyone's intentions so try as much as you can not to ask around because as the moment people know that this guy is a tourist they always think the tourists have money. So so he might be a good guy. I'm not trying to, to nullify that possibility that they might be a good guy. But then again, there are possibilities that they might be bad guys and they could actually rob you or, or like lead you into places where they, they like do human trafficking. I actually talked about this um, in also the first episode, uh, Hotels vs. Airbnb, how to be like actually careful when going about talking to strangers on your travel so yeah um try to use google map it's gonna uh, help you nine out of ten times to walk around if you consider walking and another thing that you might do that 
So if you work, the cost actually goes down to zero because you're not spending any money rather than your energy. So yeah, you, you can work and bring that cost down to zero. And another thing that you can do to bring that cost down to zero is hitchhiking. Uh, I've done hitchhiking myself, uh, not a couple of times, but I've done it. And yeah, they're just some good Samaritans in the world left. Yeah, we're still there. <laughs> yeah, so they're just some good Samaritans who can actually take you from, you know, literally matters on where they're going as well. So if you're going the same direction as where they're going, they might as well as take you. So for, for those guys who are actually like, uh, sorry, I didn't actually say what hitch icon is, but I figure everyone, uh, most people will listen to this already know what hitch icon is. But if in case you don't know what hitch icon is, it's this art. <laughs> I, I, I like to call it the art. It's this art of actually standing on the road and trying to stop cars that can actually give you a lift for free and take you to uh, yeah, just take you to where you're going in case they're going in that direction. So yeah, if you're comfortable doing that as well, so this this actually comes out com- to comfortability because you can't do that if you're not comfortable with it. But if you're comfortable with it and like to serve a few bucks, yeah, you can do hitchhiking as well and move around the city with um different strangers or different locals literally, that can help you bring that cost down to zero. And another thing that you, you might as well as consider doing is using public transport to move around different destinations because Ubers and taxis are going to be much more expensive than using public transport. So you might as well as consider using public transport to move around. So let's talk about flights. Now let's talk about flights. Let's talk about how you get there and walk. Let's talk about how you get there and hitchhike. Yeah, let's talk about flights. How you get cheap flights. So I have five different hacks that I've done research on that I'm going to share with you guys just in a moment. And yeah, and they're going to help you get cheap flights. Um, flights that maybe they could be half the price or 20% discount. Some, sometimes it's actually even um, 70% discount. So... Let's talk about hack number one. It's called the 90-day rule. So the 90-day rule, this is how it works. And this hack actually applies to every other category that I've talked about, except for food, I think. Yeah. So just actually book your flight early. Book your flight 90 days prior to the day that you live in. So that's three months prior. Actually, three months is the best time, but you could actually just extend that further to two months. Don't book a flight uh later than two months because that's gonna cost you a few extra bucks that you could save and use on other areas and that's tip number one tip number two is actually do the searching online while you are in cognito mode so in cognito mode for those of you who don't know is actually you you become anonymous <laughs> the websites can't track any of your data that you you've searched before because because this is how it works all of these um travel websites that the booking websites they actually track your details and history that you've you have on your browser so if they see you're in, you're, you're you are interested in that flight for a couple of days or a couple of number of times you've done the flight they tend to actually increase the price so you 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 you're good at doing the searching on incognito or or you could clear the cache from your browser then start browsing and it's gonna give you the fresh prices that are there other than increasing the prices that these websites do so that's tip number two guys tip number three is flight shopping so there are different websites that you that you could book your flight from and yeah, i'm gonna mention a few websites here that i've done research on and number one is expedia i think a lot of you know what expedia is it's yeah it's, it's, it's just a good website that you can you can get good um flights and there's google flights there's sky scanner so what you do um you actually just go to all these different websites and compare prices of the destination you want to go there where you just compare the prices and see which price is affordable for you and you pick 
So while doing this um flight window shopping, you, you get to actually see which website has the best prices on that particular flight, on that particular date. And this will actually help you get a very good, uh, decent amount that you can spend on a flight. And another website that I want to talk more about, there, there are actually two websites that I'm going to dig into. The first one is Hopper. Hopper is H-O-P-P-E-R. H-O-P-P-E-R. Make sure you check that one out. It's a really good website for you to, to get cheap flights. And it has these two amazing features that I love and I've personally used myself. And the first feature is the price freeze. So what you do is when you've actually like checked out and you've seen this cheap price that that maybe could go higher maybe in like a day because they, they actually tend to fluctuate um, very much. So what you do and you maybe you've seen that this price and you don't have the money right then right on that time you actually freeze the price and you can actually freeze it for I think it's 14 days so you have 14 days to actually pay that money or you could just pay a little bit of advance on that while you freeze the price then you finish it in 14 days of which is a really good feature guys and yeah I love to use it as much as I can and the feature number two that is is really like a, a good thing for this website and I would recommend a lot of you to actually use it and it's my also go-to website. It's um you could actually put in the destination that you want to go and it brings all the prices on different times of the year and actually suggests which time of the year is actually good for you to book your flight. Yeah. <laughs> so you get that advantage of looking the whole year and seeing which time of the year is actually good for you to book the flight and this actually applies to um all these other categories that i've mentioned earlier it's actually good to plan your trip on low seasons because in most destinations when it's low seasons every like every other thing the prices are just lower accommodation the hotels i mean the airbnbs they just tend to go lower so plan your trips if you're on a budget please plan your trip on low seasons where the minimum number of tourists going to that destination and the prices tend to be very low so hooper is going to help you with that it's going to show you which time of the year that you can book with that low price so yeah uh, with hooper it has these two features that i love and the next website the next website guys is actually the website that has the most the most cheap flights and it's called drumble please d -d 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 -d. <laughs> it's called skip lagged skip lagged so you I can you can actually go check that on google um okay it's skip it's just the normal skip then lag skip lag yeah s k i p l double g e d so skip lag uh, so Hoopa and Skip like are my go-to websites when I want to book a flight. So yeah, I recommend them a lot to most of my friends. And yeah, yeah. Uh, let me talk about Skip like a little bit. So what happens is when you open an account in Skip Lug and you book flights. Every time you book a flight, you get points. Every time you book a flight, you get points. You just works that up you walk your way up and it, it gets to a point where you could even have a free flight to dubai a free flight to who knows the u.s or i don't know which other destination that you'd want to go to so yeah if you open an account on skip lag you get those points and in a few years you have your or in one year it depends on how much you travel you have your free tickets to that destination to your dream destination and yeah so let's go to tip number four in the flights in getting those cheap flights so tip number four is air mile so this is just a credit card thing and it's actually um something that you can apply you, you should actually check out with your credit company credit providers credit card providers company if they offer that in most cases they will and if you apply for that and the more you use your credit card, the more you get points for the air mile. So it gets to a point where you get a free ticket to whatever destination that you want to go. It actually depends with the policies of your credit card company providers. They could have maybe fixed 
destinations for the ticket or they could have just a free just a wild card you just have to to choose where you want to go so that's tip number four tip number five oh this is my favorite and it's actually the last tip on the list is the price fair mistakes so actually these calculations online sometimes they tend to make a mistake and maybe a a, a flight that was supposed to be eight hundred dollars it goes for two hundred dollars maybe it was supposed to be six hundred dollars or a thousand dollars you find it at three hundred dollars or two hundred dollars and these mistakes happen <laughs> they happen uh more often than you think and when you book that maybe when there's this glitch in the system and maybe it's a flight maybe for six hundred dollars but it has gone to fifty dollars or hundred dollars when you book it at that price during that era there's nothing they can do about it so you just get that flight for fifty dollars to dubai and you are sorted so the best way to actually spot these prices there's a website called drumble please airfare watchdog so what you do is that you just put a destination of where you want to go in that website and they're going to notify you through email when there is a glitch in the system and you have that extremely low price for the ticket of your plane and you just book it instantly and yeah and you get that $50 ticket to Australia to whatever you want to go so guys uh, that finalizes the tips on how you could get a cheap flight and that finalizes the episode on how you could actually make costs effective on your next travel so tell me which was your favorite tri tip and tell me which tip i forgot to share and you can leave it down in the comments if you're watching this on youtube and if you're streaming this on different audio platforms we'd like to thank you for your support keep listening and tell us on which topic you'd like us to cover on the travel industry and which information you'd love us to offer on the travel industry. And if you haven't checked out our YouTube videos, you might as well as do that. And see you guys on the next one.